Namaskar, good evening. You are watching Rajya Sabha Television. I am Smriti Rastogi with news tonight. Let's begin the bulletin with the top headlines. After 186 members vote to bring in the bill, anti-triple talaq bill introduced in Lok Sabha. Congress, RSP and AIMIM protest against its provisions. Bill marks government's efforts to enact law against the offence to replace current ordinance. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu calls for debate about rules relating to lapsed bills in the upper house. Seek suggestions on speedy passage of bills. Calls for inspirational start to the new session. Several issues of public concern raised in the upper house. Members condole deaths of children due to encephalitis in Bihar. Condemned terrorist attack in Sri Lanka, 27 public members bills introduced in the Rajya Sabha. GST Council extends date for filing annual returns by two months to 30th August, decides to introduce single form GST return from 1st January 2020. Council sends proposal to reduce a GST rate on electronic vehicles to 5% from 12% to Fitment Committee. And 5th International Yoga Day celebrated with enthusiasm in India and across the world. President Ramnath Govind and Vice President M. Vinkya Naidu underscore need to make yoga part of daily lifestyle. Prime Minister Narendra Modi emphasizes its role in ensuring peace, prosperity and harmony. On the first full working day of the 249th session of the Rajya Sabha, Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu called for parliamentary reforms. He urged for a debate for automatic lapsing of any bill passed by the Lok Sabha but pending in the Rajya Sabha with the dissolution of the lower house. He suggested that any bill pending for more than five years in the upper house should be considered lapsed. He also expressed deep anguish and cautioned against dysfunctional legislatures. Chairman M. Venkaya Nadu made an important observation in the upper house on Friday as 22 bills that were pending in the Rajya Sabha lapsed with the dissolution please, of the 16th Lok Sabha please, and another 33 bills pending please, in the upper house for years, including uh, three that have been pending for more than 20 years. Chairman Naidu called for a debate on automatic lapsing of any bill passed by the Lok Sabha but pending in the Rajya Sabha with the dissolution of the lower house. Honourable members, since my assumption of the office of the chairman of this August House, I have been expressing time and again my concern about the disruptions of the proceedings of the House and the negative public perception arising out of this dysfunctional state of affairs. Substantial loss of functional time results in every low, very low productivity, pendency of crucial legislations and the resultant lapse of some of these bills on the dissolution of the Lok Sabha. Every question our last means an opportunity of seeking answers from the government on a number of issues of policy implementation and governance by around 40 members. Every zero hour last means depriving 15 members from raising issues of immediate public importance. Similarly, if the House does not function, about 10 more members lose their opportunity of raising many issues in the House in other forums. He also expressed concern over the loss of time due to disruptions and asserted that the dysfunctional, disruptive environment must change and that further weakening of democratic structures cannot be allowed. Our nation has just entered the 70th year of the Republic. Legislatures and their honourable members should discharge their noble responsibilities. As the House of Elders, we need to lead by example. This is a privilege that the people bestowed on us. The expectations are high. Our responsibilities are onerous. We can ill afford to regret over the last opportunities we had. If we fail, we fail our people. 
we face our nation. We cannot allow this to happen. We need to reassure each citizen that we can bring about a distinct change and that change shall begin with each political party and each member of this house. He also sought a debate on the reasons why there was a wide gap between the number of bills passed by the 16th Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. The bills passed by the Lok Sabha and pending in the Rajya Sabha laps with the dissolution of the House of the People. They have to be reintroduced in Lok Sabha and the entire process has to be gone through afresh. This means a lot of delay. Can we make any change in this regard? Well, just for suggestion. The House of Parliament seems to lose a lot of time in disruptive expression of adversary position. Can we change this approach and improve the quality of debates and make decision making a little quicker than now? Third, quite a few bills are pending in Rajya Sabha for decades without required consideration. Should we continue them or treat them as lapsed? Let me elaborate on each one of them and suggest we collectively think, we collectively only think of feasible solutions to each one of them. Reminding the members that Rajya Sabha being the House of Elders has an added responsibility. The chairman said that people expect a mature outlook, dispassionate and sensitive contemplation and meaningful deliberations on issues of public importance. He urged members to live up to the expectations and be role models for other legislatures. Priti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. A day after they announced merging their legislature party in Rajya Sabha with the BJP, the upper house on Friday recognized four TDP MPs as BJP members. The four MPs, namely Y.S. Chaudhary, C.M. Ramesh, Garikapati Mohan Rao and T.G. Venkatesh met the Rajya Sabha chairman on Thursday, handed him a letter seeking the merger of TDP legislature party with the BJP with immediate effect under paragraph 4 of the 10th schedule of the Constitution of India. The Rajya Sabha chairman has taken cognizance of the developments relating to the legislature parties of the TDP and BJP which happened under Section 4 of the Anti-Defection Law, which is a deemed provision. Further to the chairman, taking cognizance of this development, the Rajya Sabha Secretariat has updated the position regarding the strength of the BJP and the TDP in the upper house. Their seats, however, are yet to be changed in the Rajya Sabha. Some more developments, the upper house on Friday condoled the death of children in Bihar due to acute encephalitis syndrome. Chairman Naidu expressed profound grief over the death of the children. He, the issue also figured in zero hour with the opposition members demanding that the centre make an urgent intervention and party compensation to the families. The upper house on Friday lamented the demise of children in Bihar due to acute encephalitis syndrome. Members stood in silence in memory of the children who lost their lives. We have the news of a uh, number of children dying in the uh, state of Bihar. And uh, the house condoles the death of these helpless children also. We will stand for a minute silence to pray for the memory of those children who lost their lives. Chairman Naidu also converted a notice for suspension of business to take up the issue of Bihar deaths into a zero-hour notice and allowed Binoy Biswam of the CPI to make a submission. Sir, the hospitals, they have no medicine, no infrastructure, nobody to take care for them. Sir, what about the malnutrition? These children, these kids are died mainly because of malnutrition. They have no foods. No vitamins and no drinking water. Water in these villages are most unsafe, sir. Urgently, there should be measures to improve the health system in the country and hospitals. Urgently. The hotels is only one factor. Medicines, infrastructure, volunteers, safe water and foods are the main thing. That should be given immediately. The next thing is, sir, adequate compensation for the families of the deceased. Several members associated with Viswam on the issue. 
More than 130 children have died due to AES so far. Although most of the AES cases have been reported from Muzaffarpur, it has also been reported from adjoining districts like East Champaran and Vaishali. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. An acute encephalitis syndrome has claimed 136 lives in Bihar. As many as 600 children have been afflicted with the disease referred to as Chamki Bukhar in the area. The disease has now spread to 16 districts of the state. Muzaffarpur district has been the most badly affected, accounting for 117 deaths so far. Besides, deaths have also been reported from districts like Bagalpur, East Champaran, Vaishali, Sitamari and Samastipur. The centre as well as the state government have taken a grim note of the alarming number of deaths caused this year, the highest since 2014. Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad introduced a fresh bill to make the practice of instant triple talaq illegal. The bill was introduced in Lok Sabha amid opposition uproar. The Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage Bill 2019 will replace an ordinance issued in February by the previous BJP-led NDA government. 543 cases of triple talaq has come from 2017 in which more than uh, 229 is after the judgment. So, what do you do? You have to take the judgment from your home. This is a deterrence. And I have to take Delhi High Court, which has been in the ordinance. And after the ordinance, there are 31 cases. So, this is a matter of justice. 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 And this is a matter of justice. We have to take the judgment. कि चुनाव में हारने के बाद वो इस बात को समझेंगे कि अब थोड़ा सोचने की जरूरत है मैं इस बिल को इंट्रोड्यूस करता हूं सर और सदन से आग्रह करूंगा इसको पास करें सर अबैंडनिंग और डिजर्टिंग वाइफ्स एंड डिपेंडेंस इज़ नॉट यूनिक टू द मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी व्हाई नॉट मेक अ लॉ व्हिच यूनि� सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने जजमेंट दिया कि ट्रिपल तलाक अब वॉइड है यानी शादी खत्म नहीं होती है जब शादी खत्म नहीं होती है और हमने कानून बनाया है क्या है डोमेस्टिक वॉयलेंस एक्ट 498 आईपीसी 125 सीआरपीसी और मुस्लिम वुमेन प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट 1986 सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस योर बिल प्रपोर्टेड बिल डज नॉट सेटिस्फाइज इंटेलिजिबल डिफरेंशिया फ्रॉम द बजट सेशन witnessed some significant developments over the past year and a half. The sector has become more transparent and organized owing to recent policy changes. However, as the real estate sector faces the problems of high inventory, low liquidity and high input cost, here is the budget wish list of the real estate sector. The government has set in motion some long-term reforms in real estate sector like the Real Estate Regulation and Development Act or RERA and the GST. Over the coming years, these measures are expected to transform the unorganized and opaque nature of the sector and make it more transparent. The government's housing for all by 2022 is also a significant step in ensuring affordable housing for the low and mid-income segments. Now, the real estate sector is demanding enforcing RERA uniformly across states, industry status single window clearance and steps to control artificial price rise. Prime Minister's uh, programs at the macro level have really helped in the last five years and now I think they will become even more realistic. So price of properties will stabilize and come down probably in most of the unrealistic places. Maybe property will become a little bit more affordable now mm -hmm. in the coming time. In its interim budget, the government proposed many tax concessions like a hike in the TDS threshold for deduction of tax from rent, incentives to save capital gains tax, and increase in tax exemption limit. Many home buyers expect a continuation of such measures. Home buyer जन loan लेता है, loan loan मिल भी जाता है, tax भी tax भी जाता है, tax भी लेता है उनसे, उनको कुछ फायदा भी नहीं मिलता, कुछ भी नहीं मिलता उनसे. 
इसलिए मैं ही चाहता हूँ गवर्नमेंट सुपर सुपरिश करता हूँ उन, उनके टै, टैक्स रजिस्ट्रेशन कर दिया जाए उनके सुख को सुविधा दिया जाए टैक्स के लिए इंडियन रियल एस्टेट मार्केट को जम्प फाइव फोर टू सिक्स फिफ्टी बिलियन डॉलर बारह ट्वेंटी फोर्टी इट विल ऑल्सो बी द सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेटर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग ऑलमोस्ट थर्टीन परसेंट टू कंट्रीज जी डी पी इफ द इंडियन इकोनॉमी इज एस्टिमेटेड टू बी वन ऑफ द फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग इकोनॉमी इन द वर्ल्ड इट विल बी पॉसिबल ओनली इफ द रियालिटी सेक्टर परफॉर्म्स वेल कृति मिश्रा राज्यसभा टीवी The GST Council on Friday extended the tenure of the anti-profiteering authority by 2 years and approved imposing a penalty of up to 10% on entities not passing on benefits of GST rate cuts to consumers. Briefing media persons after the 35th meeting of the council, Revenue Secretary AB Pante said it has been decided to allow the use of Aadhaar by businesses to register with GST network. Also It extended the date of filing annual returns under the goods and services tax regime by 2 months to August 30th. The one form new GST return filing system will be applicable from January 1st 2020. Headed by the Union Finance Minister and comprising of representatives of all states and union territories, the GST Council also approved an electronic invoicing system and e-ticketing in multiplexes. I was quite happy that the environment was very conducive good me meaningful discussions happened absolutely to the point discussions and across the board they seemed to be very uh, uh, solid understanding on the issues related to the GST it was such a very heartening experience to be here Uh, GST rate on sale of electric vehicles from the current 12% to 5%, and also the GST rate on the uh, the uh, electric chargers, where the leasing of electric vehicles, so reducing rate on that uh, 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 GST on the leasing of the electric vehicles. So all these pro all these three proposals have been sent to the fitment committee. And some other developments Prime Minister Narendra Modi has emerged as the world's most powerful person 2019 in the readers poll conducted by UK based British Herald magazine winning 30.9% of the votes polled Prime Minister Modi was well placed ahead of the closest contenders which include Russian President Vladimir Putin US President Donald Trump and Chinese President Xi Jinping Prime Minister Modi will now be featured on the cover page of the July 15th edition of the magazine. It earlier featured New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern in the May June issue and put in in March April issue. And US President Donald Trump on Friday said that he is in no hurry to bomb Iran, revealing that US forces were loaded to retaliate. after the downing of a us spy drone but that he called them back in order to avoid mass casualties trump said this in a series of tweets detailing his thought process during the late thursday decision to send and then recall us forces he explained that a general had told him to expect 150 deaths on the iranian side and that he had concluded this would not be a proportionate response trump said the pentagon had selected three sites in Iran for bombing the revelations by Trump were highly unusual for a president and they gave new insight into the long running internal debate at the white house over its middle east policy the volatile situation came to a head this week when iran shot down a large us surveillance drone tehran says the drone had entered its airspace while washington says it was in international waters trump had struck twice at targets in Syria in 2017 and 2018 and for more on this we'll go across to mr ashok sajanhar former ambassador so thank you so much for speaking to rajya sabha television are iran and us on brink of a war how serious is the entire situation well uh... I would agree with you if you were to say that uh, they are on the brink of a war. 
Hmm. But if, uh, you know, the question is whether a war uh, uh, could take place, I think uh, by the statements, recent statements, you know, when both from the Iranian side as well as Mr. Trump, both of them have said that uh, neither of them wants a war. And uh, today what uh, has been revealed by Mr. Trump that he had ordered for attacks on uh, three uh, places to take place and then just 10 minutes before the uh, attack was to take place, he had uh, uh, retracted on the instructions, on the orders. Right. Then I think uh, that uh, there are conflicting voices both uh, in Tehran as well as in Washington, you, you know, between the White House and the Pentagon and the State Department. Mm. And in this case, we can see that, you know, there might be sort of extremist voices coming out from the National Security Advisor, John Bolton, from Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. But Mr. Trump has uh, been taking a more restrained view. Now, what, uh, as you said uh, yourself, that it is rather unusual for an American president to reveal such details. I think it is all being done so as to apply maximum pressure on Iran to change its... Uh, uh, you know, its approach and uh, what Mr. Trump has been demanding that Iran should come to the negotiating table and start talking. So this is further application of uh, pressure on Iran. And Mr. Sachinhar, what are the issues at stake, particularly if we talk about Iran? You see, as far as, uh, uh, meaning the whole thing started, uh, as uh, you know, your viewers would be aware, 2015 when the JCPO was signed, the Joint Comprehensive Plan on Action, and that was decided that uh, Iran would uh, not uh, engage in enriching uranium and moving towards uh, uh, building uh, nuclear right. weapons. And then in last year, in May 27, uh, 2018, uh, Mr. Trump moved out of that, saying that he is withdrawing from the JCPOA, mm. basically on two uh, grounds. One, it said that the missile testing that uh, Iran was undertaking, that was not a part of the agreement. And number two, that Iran's activities in terms of fomenting and supporting terrorism in the region, they were also not included. So he demanded that they should also be included. But as far as the agreement is concerned, the JCPOA of 2015, IAEA, the Vienna-based body, International Atomic Energy Agency uh, Authority, and other countries, they have said that Iran was abiding by its commitments under the JCPOA. So if you were to take only the JCPOA, Iran is very much, it has not violated any of the commitments. While right. Mr. Trump says that the scope of the agreement hmm. should be widened, should be expanded to include both these uh, alleged terrorist actions as also the missile tests that are conducted right. by Iran. Right. And Mr. Sachinhar, what are the prospects for diplomacy prevailing after the current show of brinkmanship by both the countries? Yes, uh, you know, uh, of late uh, we have seen that uh, the rather the, the hawks in both uh, uh, Washington and also Tehran, because we need to remember if you look at it from the perspective of uh, Iran, that in 2017, May 2017, when Mr. Rouhani was re-elected, his first term 2013 to 17. Then in 2017, he was re-elected because he said that uh, the agreement, the JCPOA that had been reached in 2015, that would have very many beneficial effects uh, for the people of Iran because the sanctions would be lifted and right. Iran would be able to trade, Iran would be able to get uh, foreign direct investment. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, so the conditions would improve. That unfortunately has not happened because in 2018, Mr. Trump has withdrawn this. So there mm. are doves, uh, uh, there have been moderates on both sides, mm. but they are unfortunately slowly, gradually being sidelined. And right. we have the hawks which are coming to occupy center space. If you were to look in Washington, you know, right. all those who all were right. advocating restraint, like uh, General McMaster, Rex Tillerson, uh, uh, and uh, Jim Mattis, they are no longer there. So you have people like Mike, Bo uh, John Bolton and Mike Pompeo who are more hawkish 
than right, the predecessors. Right, right, Mr. Sajjan Har, uh, I'll have to uh, interrupt you there because we are really falling short of time. But thank you so much for joining us and helping us analyze this entire situation presently between Iran and U.S. The tensions between the two countries and uh, let us get you all the news from International Yoga Day, which took place today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi led the country in celebrating the 5th International Day of Yoga on Friday. Over 35,000 people participated in the main event held at Prabhat Tara Ground in Ranchi. The theme for this year's Yoga Day is Yoga for Heart Care. Speaking at the event, the Prime Minister urged people to embrace yoga and make it a part of their daily lifestyle for better health and well-being. He also coined a motto to make yoga for peace, harmony and progress. At the yoga event organized at the Rashtrapati Bhavan, President Ram Nath Kovind urged everyone to embrace yoga for better health. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu attended a yoga event at the Red Fort. He said that yoga is a holistic discipline for healthy state of mind and body. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla and several MPs participated in a yoga day event organized in the Parliament House complex. And yoga day events were held across the country with union ministers leading the celebrations at many places. Home Minister Amit Shah participated in a yoga event at Rohtak in Haryana. State Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar was also present in the event. Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari led people in Nagpur in performing asans. And Defence Minister Rajnath Singh attended an early morning yoga session at Rajpath in Delhi along with New Delhi lawmaker Minakshi Lekhi and a large number of people. The Delhi BJP is hosting around 300 yoga sessions across the capital in which about 10 lakh people participated. And the Rajya Sabha Secretariat marked the International Day of Yoga in a unique way. Rajya Sabha Secretary General Desh Deepak Varma inaugurated the yoga celebrations. He inaugurated a demo and lecture session in the GMC Bal Yogi Auditorium inside the Parliament House Complex. Experts from Murarji Desai, National Yoga Institute taught the participants a number of yoga asans and their importance. The Secretary General spoke about the need and significance of yoga in our lives. We are losing sight of our own values while the whole world is looking towards it. I only hope that in today's function and today's demonstration which I am sure will be of uh, the best standard coming from uh, this, ins this very renowned institute which Government of India has set up and they would be able to demonstrate to you the correct technique of yoga and as, as much as I know of yoga more than the, more than the physical exercises the breathing with which, which goes with it is also very important. And the International Yoga Day was also celebrated at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Delhi. AIMS Director Dr. Randeep Guleria said, Yoga helps in relieving a number of diseases. Stressing on the importance of yoga, he said, Extensive research has found that yoga not only helps in preventing chronic diseases, but also cures diabetes, hypertension and stroke. So there is not a lot of evidence that has accumulated over decades and a lot of research done at the All Institute of Medical Sciences and continuing research 
which shows that yoga is helpful in a number of illnesses, especially chronic illnesses. And now when we are seeing more and more non-communicable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, stroke, cardiovascular diseases, there is accumulating evidence that regular yoga is not only useful for preventing these diseases but also helps in better control of a lot of these chronic diseases. And that's all we have for you in this edition of News Tonight. Thank you for watching. Namaskar. Thank you.